It's time to make it Just give it a try Cause you can make it Like the old fat guy Welcome to this edition of You Can Make It with the Old Fat Guy, David Farrell. If you've seen any of my videos, you likely know I like bacon. Well, today I'm going to do buckboard bacon again, but I'm going to do it in a slightly different way. I'm going to do it double smoked. By giving the bacon two different periods of smoking and two different kinds of smoking, it really kicks up the smoke flavor. Now, some people like that. Other people like a milder smoke flavor. I just like to have some variety. So again, if you just smoke it in your home smoker, you'll get a few hours of smoke. My bacon's going to get seven or eight hours of smoke in two different smoking sessions. So we'll start off with a nice big pork shoulder, which is what we make buckboard bacon out of. The difference between buckboard bacon and regular streaky bacon is that it's made from the belly, buckboard bacon's made from the shoulder, and back or Canadian bacon's made from the loin. This is kind of in between in the fat content. So now that I've got the whole pork shoulder roast here, to make bacon out of it, I'm going to have to take the skin off and cut this bone out. So we'll just get to work doing that. Now that I've got the skin off of the uh, pork roast, you'll note that there's a big thick flat layer under where the skin was. Now it's totally up to you whether you trim that or how much you trim it. It all depends how much fat you like on your bacon. This is quite a thick bit, so I'm just going to take some of it off. There we go. That'll just make my bacon a little leaner. And there's usually a big fat slab down here, and I just like to cut it off too, because it's just too much fat and not enough meat. Okay, so now let's get to taking the bone out of the meat. Okay, I've uh, taken the bone out of the meat, and there's still a big slab of meat on there, but that's going to be too thin to make bacon out of, so I'm just going to save that for making sausage, or pork chili, or anything else you want a bit of nice chunk of pork in. So we'll just save that for that purpose. Now, what you want to do with the remaining pork is you want to cut it into slabs that are less than three inches thick. So I'm just going to kind of cut this and roll it open into a slab like that. Now, as you can see, that's a nice flat piece of pork that we can use to make our buckboard bacon out of. Now, my slicer will only cut through about eight inches, so I want a couple of smaller pieces so it'll be easy to slice. So we're just going to cut this into two pieces or two slabs. There we go. Now when you're making bacon, I always suggest you treat each slab as one piece to do at a time, finish it, and then go on to the next slab. That way you make sure you get the right amount of ingredients in it. So I'll just set one of the slabs aside and work with this slab for right now. So give me a moment and I'm going to get my stuff together to set up a little bit of a curing station and I'll talk to you about how to cure the meat. I've set up a curing station and got the ingredients out to put some cure rub on the pork. 
Now, the secret ingredient to curing bacon is something called prog powder number one. Some people call it Instacure number one. Some people call it pink salt number one. It has many names, but the important thing to do is to check the label and make sure it says that it has 6.25% sodium nitrite and 93.75% salt. There are other products that have different combinations. It must be that combination to use this recipe. There's also stuff called prog powder number two and Instacure number two, but it has nitrates in it and you cannot substitute that for prog powder number one or Instacure number one. Now I'm just going to call it pink salt number one because or pink salt because that's a common name for it. The, what the pink salt does is the nitrates in it actually cure the bacon. It inhibits bacterial growth in the bacon for the long period of smoking, gives it that nice pink color, and it gives it that taste that bacon has. Now the only problem with sodium nitrates are too many of them are bad for you, so it's absolutely critical that you stick very closely to the amounts in the recipe. It is so critical that I usually choose to weigh my ingredients in a little scale here because it's more accurate than using a teaspoon. I encourage you to get one, but you can get by using dry measures. The other thing you have to do is weigh your meat because the amount of curing salts you're going to make is critical to the weight of the meat. So for each kilogram of pork, you will be using 3 grams or 2 milliliters of the pink salt. You'd be using 30 milliliters of brown sugar and 15 milliliters of kosher salt. If you're doing it in pounds, that works out to 0 0.05 ounces of pink salt per pound or 1 -fifth teaspoon per pound. And 2.5 teaspoons of brown sugar and 1 1.5 teaspoon of kosher salt. So what you'll do is you weigh your meat, and if you have one kilogram, you'd use those amounts. If you had two kilograms, you'd double it. If you had half a kilogram, you'd cut it in half. It is important you adjust the amount of curing salt rub to the amount of meat. Now my meat's just over a kilogram, so I'm just a little bit higher, but all you have to do is weigh the meat and use those ratios to the meat, and you'll be fine. So I've put my sugar and my salt in a bowl, and I have the curing salts that I weighed out, the pink salt. And I'm going to add that to the salt and the sugar. And then we'll just mix them all together. Now, when they're mixed all together, it's a really good idea to put your meat on a plate because you want to get as much of this curing salt into a bag we're going to use later as possible, including any that falls off. So if you have it on a plate, any curing rub that will fall off will go on to the plate. So we'll just put about half of this rub on the top of this piece of pork and rub it in. And then we'll flip it over and put the other half on the other side and rub it in. Try and get all the surfaces, but try and keep it on the plate too. So now that it's all rubbed in, we're going to want to put this in a bag that we'll use to cure the pork in. You can use a container, but you have to flip it more often to keep it in contact. Uh, I'm going to use a vacuum bag from my vacuum sealer. You can also use a Ziploc bag. Anything that's going to seal it, because it's important the juices don't leak out. They must stay in contact with the meat. So I've taken a bag from my vacuum sealer, and I've just sealed one end. And I'm just going to turn a cuff. It's just a bit easier to put it in and keep the top of the bag clean if you do that. And I'm going to put the meat into the curing bag. And 
And once it's in, as I said, it's important to get as much of this cure mixture into the bag as possible. So scrape as much of it as you can in. You're never going to get it all, but just try and get as much as you can in. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to wash my hands. So, we'll turn the cuff up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through my vacuum sealer again, but I'm not going to suck the air out. I'm just going to seal that. That lets me turn and massage the meat more easily. So we'll just run it through the vacuum sealer. And what we'll be doing with the second piece of meat is to just repeat all of that again. Weigh it, calculate the amounts, and put it in the bag. There we go. So as you can see, it's nicely sealed. It's not going to leak any stuff out because when this sits and cures, some liquid will come out of it. So what I like to do for curing my bacon is put it in the fridge. Now some people use um, three days per inch. Some people use uh, uh, three days per inch plus two days. Some people use two days per inch plus two days, whatever. As long as it's in for long enough for the cure to go through. So what I generally do for this is three days per inch plus a day. And it doesn't matter if it goes a couple days longer. It usually goes 12 days when I'm doing it. So I'll do the other piece of meat and I'll put this in my fridge. I'll turn it every couple of days just to massage the liquids that are in there. And we'll see you again in about 10 or 11 days. My bacon has sat and cured for about 10 to 12 days, in this case 11 days. And I turned it every day or so and it's in the nice packages and you'll feel that it's a little firmer. And a lot of the liquid that came out is soaked back into it. So now we're ready to take it out of the cure. And all we're going to do is just cut the bag open And then we're going to rinse this under some running water. Now that I've rinsed it, I'm going to put it in some clean cold water where I'm going to let it soak for an hour. What you're trying to do is just get the surface salt off of the pork. Now I did two bacon, so I'll just put my second one in. Now, this bacon will sit in this cold water for one hour to soak off but I will change the water twice or every 20 minutes just to get a bit of extra salt out of it. So I'll see you in about an hour. The pork has been soaking for an hour and I changed the water a couple of times and now I've put it on a rack. When you smoke bacon it's really important that the surface of the bacon be totally dry. You should have a almost tacky texture to it when you rub your fingers across it. That's called pellicle by people who make bacon. So I've taken out of the water. Let's get as much of the excess water off as we can. I'm just going to use some paper towels here and just pat them down. And then we'll just flip it over, do the other side. There we go. Now, to get it really dry, which is what you have to do, there's several options you can do. One is you can put it like this on a rack in front of a pan, uh, excuse me, on front of a fan for a couple of hours and let the wind blow over it and that dries it off. You can put it in a 140 degree oven with good ventilation, 140 to 150 degrees for about an hour to an hour and a half to dry it off. 
Uh, the other option, which is the one that I prefer to use, is to leave it on the rack and put it in the fridge overnight. A refrigerator just tends to take the moisture off the surface. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator overnight and let the surface of the bacon dry and develop some pellicle. I'll see you tomorrow. I let my pork dry overnight and it's got that tacky service that I told you about called pellicle, that's what you're looking for. And I put it in my smoker but I haven't turned the smoker on. What we have here is a device called the Amazon Pellet Smoker. The Amazon Pellet Smoker is just a perforated tube that you fill up with hardwood pellets that are specially made for smoking. There's just hardwood crushed together, there's no additives to it, you cannot use home heating pellets in your tube smoker. If you do, it has pine woods in that that will give it a bad flavor. So make sure you buy ones dedicated to the smoker. All you do to light up your smoker is fill it with the wood pellets and give it a blast for about 30 seconds with a propane torch. Let it burn for a minute, give it another blast with a propane torch. Let it burn for a minute and then go and blow that flame out. And then we'll just put it on the lower level, it's the same level, make sure you grab it at the back where it's cool. And that'll burn for four to five hours, which is about how long I want to give my first smoking of my double smoked buckboard bacon. So I'll see you after it's smoked for four or five hours. Let's go inside and warm up. I cold smoked the bacon for about four hours with the amazing pellet smoker in the tube. And it has a nice reddish color starting to form on it. You can see the fat starting to get some red on it. The meat's a bit darker. Now you could just go ahead now and cold smoke and then hot smoke immediately and make your bacon. And you get a nice smoke flavor. But I find if you cold smoke one day and then let the bacon sit overnight and hot smoke it the next day, your double smoked bacon has a much deeper, richer smoke flavor. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put this in the fridge overnight. I'm just going to put it on a plate. And I'm just going to put some plastic wrap over the top of it. And we'll let it sit in the fridge overnight. And tomorrow we're going to hot smoke the bacon. I'll see you tomorrow. So I let the bacon sit in the fridge overnight to let the smoke go through it. Now we're going to do the second smoking, which is going to be a hot smoking. I've got my smoker set up to a 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I put a probe into the pork so that I can keep track of the internal temperature. When that internal temperature gets to between 130 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll take the bacon out, cool it down, cover it and put it in the fridge overnight to slice up tomorrow. So I'll see you tomorrow. The bacon's had its first smoke, which was a cold smoke. It's had a second smoke, which was a hot smoke. And it sat overnight in the fridge to cool down and let the smoke flavor go through the bacon. Now at this point you want to slice it. Now I do have a rotary slicer and I'll be showing it to you in a second, but I also wanted you to see that if you have the right kind of knife, a nice straight one like this that's really narrow, gives you a nice long slice that you can cut bacon by hand. So let me just show you that. Cut straight up and down because it's so thin and it's straight. And you'll see you'll get nice thin slices. Now these small end pieces are perfect for making chili or soups, but there's a really good slice for your frying pan. And as you can see, no problem using a knife. But I'll be doing the rest with my rotary slicer because it's just so much easier. Give me a minute. So, I've started slicing the meat on my rotary slicer and it's a lot faster. As you can see, the bacon's got a lovely color, which is just what we're looking for. And you just need to go through and slice all your bacon up and you'll be done. Now something I have learned about rotary slicers, if you turn the meat every four or five slices, you just seem to get better slices, more even. So I'll just continue cutting this up and bag it and freeze it for future use, but of course I'll save some out to try now.
So I fried up some of our double smoked bacon and it's time to give it a try. So let's take a bite. Mmm. Not too salty. I go to the low end of my salt. Double smoking definitely increases the smoke flavor. It's not objectionable, but it's stronger. So if you like a light smoke, do a single smoke. If you like heavy smoke, do double smoke. But this is really good bacon and you can make it. I have a good woman I ain't good looking But I do some cooking I'm the old fat guy So use that oven If you want some loving Be like the old fat guy Like the old fat girl.